Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. As you well know, agriculture is the backbone of African society and African economies. About 70% of Africa's people live off the land and feed off the land. Now, despite agriculture being regarded as high risk and low returns, it is one of those areas where Caesar Mwangi has not feared to tread. Sassini Limited is a company that has gone where many have feared to go in terms of investment purposes. With investments in areas such as tea, coffee, dairy, this company has quintessentially become an African company rooted in the traditions of Africa's people. Dr. Caesar Mwangi is at the helm of Sassini Limited and tonight he is our captain of industry. Thank you very much Thank for coming much. through. Now as I referred to earlier on, good rains have seen a good harvest for tea yes. and also for coffee producers. Yes. Now, you know, the heavens have been good to you yes, they this have. year. They Going have. forward, yeah. um, what do you expect uh, to see in the agricultural sector and for Sassini? Yeah, well, as you say, uh, the rains have been good for us. If you recall, in 2009, mm. this country experienced a drought. And uh, that did affect uh, the tea production. Um, it did not affect us too much at that time because we happen to be west of the Rift Valley. And west of the Rift Valley, the rainfall, despite the drought, the rainfall was not affected so much because of the rainfall that comes from the Lake Victoria area. But east of the Rift Valley, there was a major uh, drop in production of tea in this country. Um, coffee, we, there was a drought last year. We spent a lot of money on irrigation. And uh, this year, actually, in the latest financial uh, uh, statements that we've got, uh, there was actually a drop in coffee because of last year's drought. Yeah. Okay, so coffee suffers one year after a drought while tea suffers in that particular year. Mm -hmm. So they're actually different crops and we've got to manage this, these somehow. Uh, the greatest, um, I think, positive that took place in this, in this uh, latest financial year was, was the increase in prices, commodity mm -hmm. prices for both tea and coffee. Uh, we saw very good increases in the price of pri international prices of tea, approximately 17% increases, and in prices of coffee, up to 50% increases. And this was really positive for us. So despite even a lower coffee production, right. we did experience a much better improved result from our coffee division uh, because of the of the higher prices. Now, in prices. many ways, Sassini is regarded as a Kenyan institution. Yes. You know, yes. a company founded on the uh, endowments yes. of the country, yes. agriculture and the richness of yes. the land. Yes. But how are you turning this company into a modern day entity that's quite relevant to the changing needs of the 21st century? Right. Um, well, as you rightfully say, agriculture is the mainstay of this economy. Um, and you say, you rightfully say, 70% of the people uh, involved in agriculture in this country as small scale uh, farmers and also as laborers on the farms. Uh, we, are, we, for a long time, Sassini has been focused on what we call the bulk export business bulk sales of tea and bulk sales of coffee. Mm. And um, about three, three, four years ago, we realized that this is not sustainable because one, the, the, there are various factors in international trade which we cannot control. We cannot control the international commodity prices. We cannot control the movement of exchange rates. And these were affecting our incomes year on year yeah. very, very much, and we had no control over these. Yeah. So about three and a half, four years ago, we came up with a diversification strategy, as you rightfully say, to make this a modern company, yeah. uh, to, to have other streams of income that would cushion us from the various fluctuations in the bulk trade right. that we're involved in. So we were involved in growing, processing and marketing of bulk commodities. Yeah. But we decided to go for what we call the value added businesses, right. which included uh, coffee milling, uh, which included retail uh, branded products, right. which included uh, Savannah coffee lounges, mm -hmm. and, and generate income streams that are not gonna be affected right. by, by volatility, which we have no right. control over. Other shifts that you have to consider is that in this day and age, climate yeah. change has become a real rallying call, yes, something yes. that to which the rest of the world is yes, galvanized yes, and committed yes, towards. Yes, yes. And experts are suggesting that with agriculture as the competitive advantage of right, Kenya, right. it's time to start thinking about your role yeah. in the alternative fuel, alternative energy space, and utilizing manufacturing concerns and agricultural businesses to be part of this energy solution right. that the world needs. Are you moving right. the company in that direction? Yeah, in fact, you mentioned uh, something we've been thinking about very seriously. Um, because you see, as a, as, a, as, a, as a tea manufacturer, for example, we use, we use timber. Uh, to fire our boilers for the tea manufacturing process. And of course, this is a, uh, an issue of deforestation, which we, we also have to, 
uh, find a way of mitigating as much as mm. possible. Uh, on the energy side, we of course use a lot of electricity and things like that. And uh, we are constantly thinking of, of, of how can we get alternative energy. We've looked at, um, at alternative sources like uh, mini hydro, mm. hydro powered stations. Uh, this depends on the amount of um, gradient in our, in, our, in our land and the amount of water passing through. We've looked at this option. We've also looked at alternative sources of energy such as solar and wind. Uh, because we believe that if we can tap into these alternatives, then maybe there's, mm. there's a chance that we'll reduce some of the other use of um, energy that we're currently using. Mm. Now, it is not a, a simple thing to do. Uh, and we're constantly, we've not actually got to a breakthrough. We're still using timber to fire our boilers, uh, but we're still looking at uh, considering various alternatives, especially solar. Mm. And these are the alternative energy, energy sources. All right, yeah. so that's the new wave and the new era yeah. of thinking. Yeah. Another issue around new ways of doing things is yeah. boosting local consumption. It's fascinating right. yes. that Kenya exports about 95% of its tea. Yes. It's the largest exporter of tea in the world, yes. but only 5% consumption yes. in this yes. economy. Yes. And yes. even if coffee, the figures are worse. The Kenyans are, worse. are not coffee Precisely. drinkers. Precisely. How are you going to address that? Yeah, very good point. Two to three percent of our coffee is drunk locally and five to six percent of our tea is drunk locally. Now, first of all, we must appreciate that we are a large producer. That's the first thing. So we should not be surprised by the low percentages of, of local consumption. Mm -hmm. But how can we drive that up? That is a question. Now, we've got in Kenya, we've got the regulators, uh, Tea Board of Kenya and the Coffee Board of Kenya, and they're very concerned with this. And they work with us very closely in promoting. We have uh, promotional campaigns in collaboration with other producers and the Tea and Coffee Board to promote the local consumption. Mm -hmm. As Sassini, we recognize that we're in a very fortunate business where we, we, are, we are selling beverages that are healthy and natural. Yeah. You understand? And, and uh, I think people are becoming more health conscious and we are telling people, look, enjoy our beverages. Uh, it's amazing if you go to the Middle East that there are coffee bars and there are tea bars okay. all over the place. But we, we don't have those here yet. And uh, well, we have bars, but they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they sell they, another, they kind, of selling another kind of beverage, <laughs> which uh, with all due respect uh, intoxicates people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're saying we have healthy beverages, you can enjoy them, they're natural, they'll boost your immune system, uh, you know, you can drink and drive with them and, uh, you know, all these positive attributes. And of course, they're much more cost effective. Yes. And, and people are slowly buying into this. And, and an illustration of the increased uh, consumption yes. is, of course, the fact that uh, we have been able to set up coffee lounges in this country. Right. Others have seen that trend and they've got into the business of setting up coffee lounges and they're having a lot of customers. Mm -hmm. So there's a growing market for coffee lounges, which means that people are appreciating these benefits, yeah. these beverages much more. These days, the emphasis is on industrialization. Yes. Helping Africa catch up with the rest of the world. Right, right. And it's almost as though it's a trade-off. Yes. Between the industrial agenda yes. and the history of agrarian economies. Yes, yes. Is it a trade-off or can these two streams move together? Yeah, there's been a big discussion around this, uh, whether we trade off and, and, and just move into industrialization and uh, get robots and get machinery and, and do all the work. Agriculture for a long time, as you're aware, has been fairly labor intensive. The, the tea industry, for example, is fairly labor intensive. And it has been so mainly because human beings are able to choose and select. Okay, Machines are not able to choose and select the, the kind of leaf that, mm. that, that is required. Uh, and um, there's been a big uh, push now um, from the labor movement to increase labor costs. And this is now where the, the, the challenge of trade-off becomes more apparent because we as a business start asking ourselves, is it worthwhile maintaining large labor forces if we're not able to negotiate mm -hmm. effectively with our trade unions and, and, and ask them to slow down on their wage demands? Uh, so I think the trade-off is right there if we don't have cooperation with the trade unions, between business and the right. trade unions. And that's where the issue of trade-off now comes in. A number of companies have gone the route of, of mechanizing, and uh, that has been very difficult. Right. But if we have, for example, 60 to 70% of our people living in rural areas, and uh, we then um, mechanize totally, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it means that those rural economies may have, will suffer to a certain degree. And those people will then be forced to move to the urban areas. Right. And of course, sometimes conditions in the urban areas are not so, so, so comfortable for many people. Then you have the slums mm. increasing and all mm. that. So there needs to be a balance between maintaining people in the rural areas and maintaining job opportunities mm. there. And, uh, and the fact that uh, the labor cost there should not be too high. Mm. But there's another side to it. There's a current generation that does not want to work on the farms. Exactly. You see? And that's the other challenge. So you see how complicated I it becomes. I wanted to raise this particular issue. I'm yeah. glad you've just brought it in. Yeah. 
as we discuss where Africa's going, yes. what it means to modernize, what it right. means to be progressive, right. there is a fear that if we don't preserve rural economies, right. we're also running the risk of not preserving traditional values. Right. Now, this is beyond just agriculture. Exactly. This is about identity. Exactly. Do exactly. you think a modern Africa means letting go of our identity? Yeah, there's a big challenge right there. Now, if our urban areas cannot absorb and they cannot create employment for all the people moving in, and people are moving to the urban areas and living in very squalid conditions, uh, the question arises, are they better off in the squalid urban area or in the relatively so-called poor rural area where they at least they'll have their food, they'll have fresh air, they'll have decent accommodation, uh, maybe not uh, very magnificent uh, houses, but space where they can, they can live and maybe they may not have uh, all the electronic gadgets in the, in, the, in, the, in the urban areas, but they will have a reasonable quality of life. Mm. So it's a question of the quality of life that people are looking for, people should have. I think the quality of life is very miserable in the slums. Mm. You know? And maybe the people in the rural areas might be better off living there. They, at least they have fresh food. Yeah. You know, in the city, city the slums, time. the people don't have a little garden to grow their food. Yeah. So they've got to somehow find a way of buying that food. And they've got to buy that food by getting some uh, wages from some labor. And uh, because they cannot afford transport, they end up walking long distances to wherever they have to seek mm -hmm. the, the accommodation because the cities are not planned very well for these people. So you find that uh, th there is that debate which I think we have got to, we've, got to, we've got to engage with. Um, generally, the breakdown in family values happens much faster in the urban areas. Yeah. This is a fact. Okay? Yeah. The rural areas, you still find a bit of uh, common courtesy, a bit of family values, a bit of respect for the elderly etc. And uh, these are issues also that improve the quality of life of the people. It's definitely alive and it's definitely yeah. alive here on Captains yeah. of Industry. We're speaking yeah. to Dr. Caesar Mwangi, the yeah. managing director of Sassini Limited, yeah. a company that has um, established itself as the bedrock of the agricultural economy, involved in agro-processing, one of the foremost stocks on the NSC. Dr. Mwangi is not just an agricultural economist, but somebody who's been quite vocal about family values and eroding uh, moral fibers here in Africa. And as we talk about modernity versus history, uh, urbanization versus rural economies, industry versus agriculture, this is the terrain we're moving into.